We recognize the member from Saskatoon University. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, at the outset, I want to make it perfectly clear that I unequivocally support the motion brought forward by the member from Mooseman, recognizing the vital role played by free trade within Canadian economy and the international economic sphere, and acknowledging the many benefits that free trade has brought out in our fair province of Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan's economy is heavily focused on exports. Our province exports goods to over 150 countries. Saskatchewan exports are ranked number one in Canada at $29,000 per capita, Mr. Speaker. The total value of Saskatchewan exports doubled from $16.4 billion in 2006 to over $32 billion in 2015. Mr. Speaker, Saskatchewan provides 65% of the world's lentils, 55% of the world's peas, 39% of the world's durum wheat. Over 30% of the total worldwide production of potash comes from Saskatchewan and 15% of the world's production of uranium. Saskatchewan is also the lar second largest exporter of oil in Canada. As well, Mr. Speaker, we ship over $5.8 billion in manufactured goods every single year, including dry land farm equipment and mining machinery. According to Export Development Canada, one in every three jobs in Saskatchewan is dependent on our exports. It goes without saying, Mr. Speaker, that free trade offers many substantial benefits to Saskatchewan's economic development and our sustained prosperity by opening up new opportunities for people, investors and businesses and eliminating barriers to trade and facilitating economic exchanges between our provinces here in Western Canada. Vital to the economic growth and benefits afforded by free trade are trade deals and partnerships that establish regulations mutually benefit market exchanges between different regions. Nowhere are these partnerships more vital to the establishment of stable and prosperous market relationships than they are between Saskatchewan and its fellow Western provinces of Alberta, BC and Manitoba. As such, a dynamic and expansive, dynamic and expansive trade agreements such as the New West Partnership and the prospective Canadian Free Trade Agreement are a pivotal component of our relationship with our fellow provinces and an important driving force in our economic success. Originally here signed in Regina in 2010 as an economic partnership between Saskatchewan, Alberta and British Columbia, the NWP has acted as a pillar of economic activity in Western Canada for years. Membership in this agreement commits each province to improve trade, investment and most importantly the mobility of labour as well as eliminating barriers designed to obstruct the free movement of people, goods, services and investments between the member provinces. Between Saskatchewan, Alberta and BC, the NWPTA represents over 5.4 million workers and $651 billion in GDP, a figure which comprises a full third of Canada's national gross domestic product. Thus, the NWPTA area represents the largest and most open and most competitive interprovincial trade market in Canada. The most tangible benefits of membership in the NWP are enhanced labour mobility, streamlined business registration and regulations, increased competitiveness, best value for public spending, collaboration on infrastructure and our sharing of educational resources. Mr. Speaker, NWP's labour mobility Provisions enable certified workers to practice their occupation in any of the market provinces without being required to undertake additional certification exams or training. Mr. Deputy Speaker, that part is the most important to me and to my family. Way back in 1996, Mr. Speaker, our family was looking to move out of Saskatchewan and into Alberta because it seemed like everybody else had. So. We decided to take a look at the market. We decided to take a look and see what opportunities were out there. I had no problem. My wife, however, was a hairdresser. And apparently, hair is different in Saskatchewan than it is from BC or Alberta. As a hairstylist, she would have had to go back to school, spend about $9,000, take another test, go through the, the apprenticeship, and then write her journey person's certificate, Mr. Speaker to style hair. Now, I'm not sure how hair different, differs from Saskatchewan to BC, but apparently it was a huge difference and it would have cost our family over $25,000, Mr. Speaker. Now, as my son enters Sask Polytechnique to take 
the automotive service technician program, once he's completed his apprenticeship and his journeyman uh, certificate, Mr. Speaker, he'll be allowed to practice anywhere in the Western provinces, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Business registrants in member provinces are now enabled to register in all other provinces at the same time as their first incorporation, with all previous residency requirements removed. As well, all unnecessary differences in business regulations and standards have been removed under the NWP. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the free passage of capital, goods, services and workers across the border of borders of member provinces significantly streamlines the process for businesses to expand into other provinces, lowering the cost for corporations and taxpayers in the pro process. In addition, the NWP's open procurement policies make it significantly easier for small and medium-sized businesses to make bids on our public contracts. The NWP also aims to reduce costs for consumers, governments and businesses, increase access to information to facilitate economic exchanges, increase cooperation between member provinces, and provide support to ongoing trade at, a, at both a national and international level. As well, the agreement is designed to encourage the resolution of disputes in the most effective, fair, and timely manner possible. Mr. Deputy Speaker, it is likely due to these substantial benefits that an exciting milestone recently has been achieved in the history of the New West Partnership. Earlier this month, the Government of Manitoba concluded negotiations with Saskatchewan, Alberta and BC to join the NWPTA. This signals a welcome expansion of the largest unobstructive interprovincial market in, in Canada. Manitoba's government is eager to join the NWP and begin mutually beneficial joint work with its partner provinces under the agreement. The hard-working citizens and entrepreneurs of Manitoba will also reap the benefits of the agreement, including greatly increased mobility and streamlined regulations for accessing and in engaging with interprovincial markets. With the addition of Manitoba, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the NWPTA comprises a common market of more than 11 million Canadians, bringing the combined GDP up to more than $750, $750 billion. The NWP now includes over 30% of Canada's total population. Despite the welcome addition of Manitoba to the NWPTA, Mr. Deputy Speaker, relations between our province and Alberta recently came under strain because of the NDP's, Alberta NDP's government's imposition of an unfair beer markup to brewers in the, in the NWP area, including Saskatoon-based Great, Great Western Brewery. In October, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the Alberta Gaming and Liquor Commission announced a new markup regime for beer products dividing products into four tiers of increasing markup based on annual worldwide production volumes. In July of 2016, the Alberta Gaming and Liquor Commission modified that beer markup regime so that, and I want to, make, I want to get this straight, as of August, all brewers were subject to a $1.25 a litre markup. However, this change also coincided with the announcement of a grant program for small brewers just in Alberta, Mr. Deputy Speaker, which effectively offsets the costs of that increased markup. Mr. Speaker, that's the NDP in Alberta. However, in October of 2016, Great Western launched a challenge on the constitutionality of the Alberta markup regime. The government of Saskatchewan is pleased to note that Great Western Breweries has successfully applied for an injunction stopping Alberta from applying its unfair beer markups to Great Western products, Mr. Deputy yeah. Speaker. We continue to support Great Western as it continues to challenge NDP Alberta's discriminatory markup system and look forward to full resolution on this matter. The Alberta government's unfair beer markup is not an outlying incident, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Far from it. On the contrary, it fits within a much larger record of new democratic opposition to trade agreements, which in turn stands in stark contrast to the Saskatchewan Party's consistent embrace of free markets. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I would like to emphasize my support for the motion affirming this Assembly's support for free trade within and outside of Canada 
and the many advantages that this trade brings to our province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.